Okay, I'm gonna do my best to keep my thoughts cohesive and to get to the point. One of my most favorite IPs, intellectual properties, make believe fictional universes is Warhammer 40K. It is awesome, it's brutal, it's not cringy, it's cool, the lore is great. And there may be some things that the people watching won't understand, but the people who are into the culture or the community will understand. So with that being said, the lore in Warhammer 40K, which is basically a tabletop game that is an expansive universe in the same vein as Star Wars, like there's in the same vein as comic books, there's different things that are set within the lore that make up, you know, essential things that cannot be changed about the story or the storyline. You know, for example, Superman uh, doesn't get angry and turn green and Batman doesn't go into a phone booth and come out with his suit. Like it's something, it's something that's considered the lore breaking. And as far as I'm aware, there's a faction of, in a sense, a faction. Like you have different factions in Warhammer, you know, different groups, subgroups. There's a faction in Warhammer called the Custodies. And a quick little rundown: the Custodies are the the guard, prayer to guard of a, a character named the God Emperor of Mankind. And something that's basically. Uh, important to the aspect of the lore behind the custodians is that they are men and since this game or these stories have been around they have always been men and the lore explains into great detail why that is the case and today they announced that they are now female characters within the ranks of the custodians which is completely lore breaking and I fear that as certain parts of, you know, as certain sectors of culture, whether it be music, enter enter entertainment, top of the umbrella, video games, music, comic books, TV shows, you know, there seems to be a, a virus creeping into things that keep us, you know, culturally entertained. Because here's the important, and I may be rambling, but... Culture or pop culture is something that's very important to society because although I may look different from this guy and this guy may have different beliefs from me, we can bond over our shared love of, like, say, comic books or Warhammer 40K. And, and here's my theory on it. Uh, I'll land this plane. <clears throat> There's an investment firm called BlackRock. And BlackRock is a company potentially worth a trillion or more dollars and what they do as in all investment firms is that they invest as in buy shares in multiple different companies in many sectors the unique thing about BlackRock is that they are so prevalent in every sector and aspect of business and businesses uh, because of their funding, their money. And they have a scoring criteria that they use to judge companies called uh, something sustainable development goals. And it's called the ESG score. That's all you need to know, the ESG score. And so they evaluate companies based on criteria for their ESG score. And then this will make the company more favorable to get, as far as I'm aware, loans or to basically get interest-free money. Now, in the past, it's been discovered that companies have been willing to take a loss, just as in like, piss off their fan base, or you know, like for example, a movie will come out and the plot is so radically changed from the source material that the fan base rejects it and the movie flops. The movie studio was willing to take that loss and that flack to maintain the ESG score and a good relationship with BlackRock. So, for people who've been keeping up with this, BlackRock is behind a lot of the things that uh, the internet discussion will deem woke. However you feel about that, 
when it comes to entertainment, that type of stuff just, in my opinion, it's it's cringy. I can go into it deeper in other videos, but it ruins things. Now, so far, Warhammer has been anti-woke. The source material, everything about it just doesn't lend itself well to this modern type of progressive thinking that you see is so pervasive in our movies and television and entertainment. Until now, uh, the community behind it is uh has like a gatekeeping mentality and for good reason because of you know this this right here so but i i will say um <clears throat> the the terrible thing about allowing the lore to be changed in such a way is i think it leans it it, it brings up a deeper discussion and i bring this up all the time it's always at the forefront of my mind you know about the, the messages that we get in society and what they show us and what they try to tell us that they hammer home on these shows. Ideological subversion. That's the only way I can say because like I said, if you have different things within our popular culture that unite us, like for example, when Akira Toriyama died, the creator of um, Dragon Ball, he was so renowned worldwide that people who don't even speak the same language came together to mourn his loss. You had people in South America, you had people in Mexico people in Asia and Japan so that's something that those groups of people can bond over you know whether it be Naruto One Piece whether it be something like that people who are different from each other they can bridge the gap and find something to relate to now if you wanted to invoke widespread social change over time you would destroy the things that people can relate over um, usually it's it's cultural icons fictional you know, you would you would you would basically subvert them and make them to where you turn them away until there's nothing. You turn away the people who who had a love shared love over those things until eventually there's nothing left and we wholesale reject it. That is a form of demoralization, which is a step in ideological subversion. And that's a whole methodology and tactic to change the fabric of society through repeated propaganda. In messaging and tying it back to this company BlackRock and, and sorry if I'm rambling their ESG score some people claim that that very thing is the vehicle for ideological subversion and that there's a larger agenda behind it just doesn't make sense if I did some digging BlackRock owns a lot of shares in Games Workshop which is the parent company that owns the IP Warhammer 40k and it's a media empire, Games Workshop, Warhammer 40K. You also got Warhammer um, that's breaking into the mainstream. And when a lot of things break into the mainstream, the old fan base is usually disappointed because it's made palatable or Disneyfied, the Disneyfying effect for larger audiences, which ruins the original source material. But the difference is within this, you know, progressive virus that's the only thing i can call it that's taking over everything that we love everything that's deemed cool you know it's ruining things uh but i don't know this is just me rambling like i really really like warhammer 40k and i'm afraid for the future of the ip like where is it gonna go you know a lot of the things that people are just they've gotten fatigued on the superhero movies um, Star Wars, you know, the original fan base is just like, yeah, it's it's ruined. You know, I don't know. It's not real. It's not a big deal. It's not real, but it's just like, I think it's just my thoughts. I just feel like this stuff is, is creeping its way into everything that we love. Whether it be politics, entertainment, just discussions. You know, there's definitely... A machine behind this is a machine but what is the goal of this machine what is the goal and I really think it's a multifaceted strategy to erode away things that unite us for the very purpose of division and to basically demoralize us everything everything that you know men for example find cool is being feminized or vilified, you know, politically, 
uh, within the cultural conversations, you know, like, look at action movies today. You know, I understand the hero's journey, so to speak, but, you know, the classic action movies of the 90s where you had a very masculine, buff male, you know, fighting against the odds has been replaced with, like, a angsty, skinny teenager, bumbling, you know, it... It's just like everything, it's like everything's being watered down, Disneyfied, and it's just, I don't know. Anyway, this is the Bitcoin Bandit. I don't know. I need to start making these videos more. I got a new camera, so I mean, hopefully I'll start putting out some stuff. But man, that Games Workshop thing, that really, that really, it really hurt me in a I hope it doesn't go in the direction I think. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later.